Okay, so we're going to learn how to solve um, Schrodinger's equation here, the one-dimensional Schrodinger equation, um, using the finite difference method. So the Hamiltonian operator here in Schrodinger's equation is composed of a kinetic energy and a potential energy part. Um, the thing that makes this equation difficult to solve um, is this second-order derivative with respect to position here. But using the finite difference method, we can express that differential operator as this matrix. Um, so now it's, it's much easier to express um, to computers. Um, and so what this is an example of what this would look like for just a, um, a wave function with four points in it. So the, your, uh, if, if it was there five points, it would be a five by five matrix. And if there are six points, it would be a six by six matrix and so forth and, and so on. In reality, we're going to be solving this with thousands of thousands of points. Um, but just for simplicity of looking at what we're talking about, I'm only showing the first four here. Okay. Um, but no matter how big this is, the diagonal is always negative two. And these off diagonals are one and everything else is zero. Um, for this potential energy function, the diagonal is your potential energy and everything else is zero. Okay, so actually really easy matrices to construct. Um, and we've got this one over dx here, delta x uh, squared. Delta x is just the spacing of your x points in your function. Um, so if you've got, you know, uh, a thousand x points that you're plotting between zero angstroms and one angstrom your dx is one one thousandth of an angstrom um okay so um you can you can if you if you multiply this um, coefficient through to this whole matrix here um then you can add your kinetic and potential energy matrices together. When you add matrices, you just add each you know, corresponding element of the matrix together. So you end up getting this along the diagonal and these along the off diagonals. Um, so you can express this Hamiltonian operator as just a single matrix once you simplify this equation. And what you'll notice is only the diagonals and off di diagonals contain any numbers. Everything else is going to be zero. So if you're using thousands and thousands of points, that's a ton of, of wasted memory in your computer and, and wasted computations when you're, you know, adding and multiplying matrices because almost all of the numbers are zero. So instead, we're going to, um, instead, we're going to just make three linear arrays. Um, one for the lower diagonal, which we'll call E, one for the diagonal, which will be F, and one for the upper diagonal, which will be G. Okay, so every element in the lower diagonal, E, is just the same thing, because it's just one times this coefficient, except for the very first point, which would be zero, because there's no E value here for this first row and so that's the same as it being zero um, and for the G matrix um, it's the same thing only instead of the first point being zero it's the last point that's zero because there is a value in the first row of this matrix in the upper diagonal but there's no value in the last row of the matrix okay so the zero goes at the end there so this is what we want to construct in our program, is just we want to construct these three arrays, E, F, and G, which are these three diagonals of this um, Hamiltonian operator matrix. Um, so let's get to it here. I've just copy and pasted this, um, this step so we know what we're working toward, because it's, it's easier to compute if we... Uh, if we kind of break it up into simple parts here. 
So we should put our, our inputs and outputs as usual. Going to make a numeric control, which is um, uh, dx. That'll be our delta x here. That's something we're going to need to know. Um, we also need to know m, the mass of the particle we're solving Schrodinger's equation for. Um, we're also going to need to know uh, what the potential energy function is. Um, that's going to be an array. Okay, we've got a whole bunch of points in our potential energy function, so I'm going to go to array, make an empty array here, put a numeric control inside of it, and that's going to be our v of x. And uh, I believe that's all the inputs we actually need here. But then we're going to need some um, uh, outputs, um, which will be E, F, and G. So it'll be these three uh, arrays for the three diagonals there. Um, so I'm just going to copy this potential energy array, call that E, change it to a um, indicator instead of a control so that it's an output instead of an input. I'm going to copy that a couple times here. Um, there's actually one more array we're going to have be an output here, which it'll become apparent why we're going to do this in the next video. But um, I'm going to call this the initial wave function guess because in order to end up solving this um, differential equation, you first to you, you need to guess a, a wave function for it, and then you kind of converge to the right answer. Um, okay, so that's all of our things here. So let's calculate this coefficient first. This is just some simple, simple math. Um, so we want to do, uh, let's do this denominator here. I'm just going to do a um, compound arithmetic to multiply several numbers together at the same time. And we want 2 times m um, making things clean as I go, times delta x squared. So we're going to put in the square here. Um, and uh, then we need to do the top, which is just going to be negative h bar squared. Now you have to make sure all your units work out, um, cancel out properly to be whatever units you want this to ultimately be in. Um, previously calculated this one. These are the units of h bar squared if, um, I can't do two things at once here, three, four, six, one, oops. Um, these are the units of h bar squared, or negative h bar squared, I should say. If um, your energy is in terms of inverse centimeters, your mass is in terms of grams per mole, and your uh, distance is in terms of angstroms. Okay, so this is going to save us a lot of unit conversions down the road. And we're going to put a divide here. Now we've got this factor, negative h bar squared uh, divided by 2m dx squared. Okay, so our E array is going to be all, all ones, except for the first element, 
times this coefficient. So I'm going to go to array, initialize array. Uh, we want everything to be 1. So I'm going to make a constant for the element, which is just 1. How big do we want it? We want it to be have the same number of points in it as we have points in our uh, function, which is which is going to be the number of points in our potential energy function. So I'm going to get use the array size function here um, to uh, let's just turn these on so you can see what I'm using um, to figure out how many points are um, how many points we need and we'll make our new array the same size so if I take this array um, I need the I need the first element in the array to be uh, zero so I'm gonna go to replace array subset And for index zero, which is that first point in the array, uh, I'm gonna have the new new element be um, zero instead of one. So I can actually just use the same zero constant. Okay. And that's gonna, and then what I also need to do is multiply that by this coefficient. Um, which is the same as if instead of making this um, one, it's just going to be it's going to be one times this coefficient. So instead of making this be one, I'm just going to wire the coefficient directly in there, um, and that's going to give us um, e. Pretty easy. Um, G, the upper diagonal, is the same thing, only instead of the first point being zero, the last point is zero. So I'm going to actually just branch off from um, this initialized array here, where everything is equal to this coefficient. But instead of replacing the zeroth index with a zero, I'm going to replace the last element in the array with zero. And so that would be the size of the array minus one is the index of the um, last element in the array. Oops. And we're gonna make that a zero. The value of that be zero. And that's going to be G. Um, okay. And then our um, F is just going to be negative two times this coefficient plus our uh, potential energy function here. So let's do this. Uh, let's do this down here. So I'm going to take this and multiply it by negative two, and then we don't need to replace anything with zero because there's a diagonal value at every row in this matrix. Um, so I can actually just multiply. this array by a constant negative two. And that will give us F. Cool. Um, super easy. Um, I'm also just going to um, 
make an initial wave function guess here, which I, I'll explain later, but I just, I'm just going to make all the values in this uh, equal to 1. So let's just initialize. Let's do this down here. Let's initialize an array again. The size of this array is just going to be the same size of all of our other arrays. And the value is going to be 1. Okay, so that's all there is to it. Now we just want to um, wire our input and output terminals here. So initial wave function guess will go in the top right. And E, F, and G. Um, over here, I'm gonna make my potential the top. And then uh, M, and then DX doesn't really matter the order um, and then I'll save it um, and I'll just save it as uh, make Hamiltonian hey uh, Dr. Grubb from the future here one thing I forgot to do when I made the video here the first time is add the potential energy term here at the end because all all we've actually done so far is we've made this bit of the Hamiltonian operator we've made the kinetic energy operator uh, we need to add the potential energy operator to that which is this matrix and the way you add two matrices matrices of the same size is you just add the corresponding elements which means the potential energy will be added directly to our F array. So all I need to do to finish this program is uh, insert and add. And add our potential energy to it. And then we're done.